We're joined now by Dr. Rod Hall, our state veterinarian for the state of Oklahoma, who is based out of the Department of Agriculture. Dr. Hall, thanks for joining us today. We want to dive right in and talk about avian influenza. And in the last week or so, we've had a, a case confirmed in Oklahoma. So get us up to speed on, on what happened and, and where we are now. Okay, well, thanks for having me, Lyndall. Uh, we did have uh, uh, almost two weeks ago now, we had a, uh, a person in Payne County who found a, a, a wild waterfowl that was, uh, wasn't was sure if it was injured or, or sick, uh, collected it, took it to the veterinary school at Oklahoma State University, and the prognosis was very, very poor. So they went ahead and humanely euthanized that uh, that duck, and then took it to uh, the Oklahoma Animal Disease Diagnostic Lab to be necropsied and, and tested. And it, and it was positive at that lab. It had to be, uh, since avian influenza is a foreign animal disease, it has to be confirmed at a USDA lab. So uh, a few days later, we got confirmation that it was positive for highly pathogenic avian influenza. And uh, this, this only confirmed what we already knew that that the virus was present in Oklahoma. And we've talked uh, with our extension veterinarians, Dr. Whitworth and Dr. Biggs about some of those biosecurity measures. It doesn't hurt to go ahead and give a, a quick overview again of, of some of those safety practices. What, what do folks with poultry need to do? Well, I'm, I'm gonna focus mainly on the backyard poultry lindle. Uh, because our commercial poultry industry, they, uh, they have to take biosecurity measures already for other diseases. But for the backyard folks that have six or eight or 10, or in some cases, even much larger backyard flocks, uh, they, they can take some measures to help prevent uh, exposure of their birds. The, since the virus is carried by these wild waterfowl, we're looking at places where wild waterfowl uh, come to visit. So that would be farm ponds, uh, lakes, city, city lakes, uh, rivers, uh, and, and then the potential for the domestic poultry to come to those places. So anytime uh, we want to try to prevent those domestic poultry from going to ponds or to prevent the, the wild waterfowl from coming up into areas where domestic poultry are gathered, just covering the areas where domestic poultry are to prevent the droppings from these wild waterfowl as they're flying over. And it's my understanding that this is, is pretty contagious. Can you give us some context on, on that, on how the disease is, is transmitted from one animal to another? It, it is very contagious. Uh, once it gets into domestic poultry, so you know, usually we think of chickens and turkeys uh, it, it goes from one to the other very easily. It, it doesn't take much of, uh, you know, whatever kind of material. Like I say, typically, typically it's the feces of those infected animals. So what can the public do to help uh, with this situation in terms of, of reporting and, and just helping with the tracking? What, what do you need people to do? Well, certainly if, if uh, producers have sick birds, uh, you know, and, and we're talking uh, the domestic poultry here, so chickens or turkeys, uh, any, any uh, significant illness or deaths in those birds, we would appreciate the, the people contacting us and letting us know. Uh, we've got two numbers that, that we'd like to give out. So uh, our number here at the Oklahoma Department of Ag is area code 405-522-6141. So that, that number would be the one to call for any suspicious cases in domestic poultry. Uh, if a person notices wild waterfowl, uh, they can report that to the USDA Wildlife Services. Dr. Hall, thank you for your time today and an, an update on this kind of evolving situation. Uh, for a link to the phone numbers that Dr. Hall mentioned, and for more information on avian influenza and its prevention, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.